Let's appreciate our, our brother, Reverend Furi. Indeed, I consider you a friend. And just being here tonight, I indeed want to thank God for this opportunity. I don't take it for granted. It's an honor to serve in the Lord's vineyard. Uh, I do not need to repeat that very elaborate introduction. Uh, by the grace of God, I am born again. And I would like to meet Jesus. I hope all the many mansions he's preparing, mine is also being prepared. Because he promised, said, in my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And that is my hope, one day of being reunited with my Savior, Jesus Christ. I got born again in high school. Uh, that's where, where I met the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, friends, I can tell you, it's good to know Jesus when you are young. Because then you, you give your energy to him and you serve him. And what a joy it is to come alongside and just see what God can do over the years. This is my 26th year of youth ministry. And it's a joy to serve God's people and to be used in him and of him. I bring greetings from Ruth. My wife is called Ruth. Um, she was not able to join me this evening. I hope she can join me through the link, but she's on duty. She's working night duty. She's uh, shaping the gen gen another generation. Uh, my wife is a teacher, and she's also a chaplain, and so she brings her greeting. Uh, we have two sons, 16 years old and 14 years old, and then our daughter, our last born, is 10. And so <clears throat> I'll try to finish in good time so I can go home and do daddy duties. Amen. So that is how God has blessed us, and we thank God. Friends, tonight I want to talk about a topic that is very close to my heart. As you've heard, I've written a book in the area of intimacy, especially around couples. Uh, by the grace of God, uh, God has given us a ministry to couples called the Couples Clinic. And we meet many couples uh, in this city and across. And thank God to online. Now we're able to do Zoom meetings. Uh, I remember yesterday I was in a meeting with a couple from one side of the world, one continent, another continent, and I am where, and in Africa. And they're working out their plans as they work towards their marriage. Uh, and God has given us technology to be able to just walk and be able to continue ministry even online. And so I want to welcome those people who are watching online. It's my joy to be part of this family week at PCA Thome. I like preaching to crowds I can see. So if you hear me shouting like I can see you, just where you are, please put your cup down as you sip through. And, uh, and uh, 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 you know, show, it, uh, show me that we are together, okay? Uh, and let's engage together in this. Um, who, why do I talk about tonight? I was wondering what was in the mind of the, of the minister as you came up with this topic, reclaiming intimacy. You know, two words, reclaiming and intimacy. Uh, and, and as I looked at this, I thought of a scenario. Uh, let me uh, and engage you and ask you to please indulge with me in this scenario that I want to paint for you. Imagine an exotic setup of a candlelit dinner with soft romantic music in the background for a couple meeting for the first time after a one-year separation. They have been away from each other for one year, and now there is such an ambience created for them to have this lovely buffet. Do you think the two will share a deep intimacy at the end of this cozy, well-set dinner if all they do is enjoy the sumptuous buffet and revel in the romantic atmosphere without getting down to the dirty business of what caused their separation. If they just created an atmosphere to eat and enjoy the music and don't talk about what made them separate, do you think by the time the dinner ends, they'll be in a great place of intimacy? Reclaiming intimacy many times will require that we dig deep into the level of offense and lost fellowship with the goal of restoring the mutual love and companionship that we shared in the beginning. I was reading the Message Bible, the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, in the Message a very funny translation. This is what it says. Revelation 2, 4 to 5. But you walked away from your first love. Why? What's going on with you? 
Anyway, do you have any idea how far you have fallen? A Lucifer kind of fall. That intrigued me. Turn back. Recover your dear early love. No time to waste, for I am well on my way to removing your light from the golden circle. I want to repeat that reading from Revelation 2, 4, and 5, the message. But you walked away from your first love. Why? What's going on with you? Anyway, do you have any idea how far you have fallen? A Lucifer kind of fall. Turn back. Recover your dear early love. No time to waste, for I am well on my way to removing your light from the golden circle. And I ask myself, how does intimacy look like? How does intimacy look like? And I think, just in a simple definition that I was able to get as I asked this question, that one uh, author has defined intimacy thus, it is the experience of really knowing and being known. Ex the experience of really knowing and being known by another person. And the opposite of intimate is superficial or on the surface. And no one wants to be known, be known or to know someone superficially or on, on the surface. We cannot be intimate with a person we do not trust. We cannot be intimate with a person we don't trust. And this is an original quote from myself. Trust is the non-negotiable ingredient of intimacy. Trust is the non-negotiable raw material or ingredient of intimacy. Isn't it funny how distant we can feel in the company of someone we don't trust in the same room, yet be so intimate with another person Thousands of miles away, we call it long-distance relationship. The other day, I was forced to be in a long-distance relationship with my wife. A whole month and 10 days, I was in the U.S., and I was nine hours behind her. And I've never been in a long-distance relationship in a long time. When people are waking up here in Kenya, I was getting... Uh, just pre preparing for bed in nine going to ten and I've had a full day in the cold winter of Nashville, Tennessee and I had to find a way of connecting with my wife for those 41 days I had to find a way of talking with Madam Ruth, otherwise I would have been ruthless I was in a long distance relationship praise the Lord but I realized it was so important that we catch up on a daily basis. So, there are times I would have been talking at 2 a.m. In fact, around 3, 2.30, p.m., she's just left last year, so a minute or so, I've seen a missed call. And that time I'm trying to catch up with a few things I was doing there. I had to stop, step out, and call. But most of the times I would call that I was comfortable was 2 a.m., 3 a.m., so I changed my sleeping pattern because I needed to be intimate with someone who is so dear to me thousands of miles away. I was there physically in the U.S., but my heart, I can tell you my heartbeat, was here in Kenya. Because there's something that that relationship means for me. The value of that relationship conditioned my intimacy. Friends, I was going through a podcast that of a brother I've never met, and I just stumbled on this. He's called Pastor Kingsley and Mildred, his wife, Okonkwo. Please check this guy out. I was, he shared something, that re, an acronym of the word that I want to talk about tonight that really blessed my heart. So Kingsley and Mildred shared the acronym of the word intimate. They were trying to paint a picture for couples on how intimacy looks like. 
And I thought we could borrow some principles from their sharing that can apply not just to couples, but to family. How can I be intimate with my spouse, intimate with my children, intimate with my God? So I want to look at intimate on those three levels. With my spouse, with my children, and with my God. And they are not in any particular order of priority. So, what Kingsley and Mildred shared on the acronym of the word I-N-T-I, M-A-T-E, intimate. On the I, they say that I stands for intentionality. The I in intimate stands for intentionality. And I look at a scripture, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos 3, 3 says, for how can two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. And what the, uh, Kingsley was sharing uh, in this sharing on, on, on online about intentionality, he says that you need to, we need to go to work daily on our relationship. Intentionality simply means that we need to go to work on a daily basis on our relationship with our significant other, with our children. I remember over COVID season, our three children were at home and we were told to work from home and to work with two teenagers, energetic teenagers who, when they enter the fridge, you think there was a storm. Hallelujah. And so we were five people in the house and I remember we had to come up with ways of ensuring that we do stuff together. And every morning, we called a friend of ours called Coach Pato. And Pato would come to our house for the first one hour, seven to eight, for physical fitness exercise. And we pushed the weights and we did a lot of physical wellness, which has become my passion for, for the whole family. We put the black mat and we just jumped and sweated. After sweating, we went into the cleaning of the compound and do clean up. We were having our breakfast at 11. We decided now to have a new thing called brunch. Thank God for brunch. So that a heavy breakfast that accommodates both breakfast and lunch. And the next meal was at 6.37 and then good night. Praise the Lord. We had to come. Because now we realize we don't know how long Corona was going to take. And we were all in the house. We had to be intentional about how to build that cycle called family. And we had to come up with activities to do together. And one thing had to go. We had to, one meal has had to suffer. We remained with two meals just to manage us. But one of the things I love about the season when the house together was waking up to do an activity together, cleaning together. There are times we would sit together and my sons would out download movies. We watched several Christian movies together. After the early supper, we would watch until 9, 10 p.m. And they say, nice time to go to sleep. And we would laugh together. There's one movie. I remember I was holding my tears because my children were watching. I'm one of those guys when I watch a movie, I cry. I don't know if there's anyone like me here. Tears, when he saw Ikishika San and Aliyah. And imagine your dad crying. I never saw my dad crying. But this time I couldn't hold it. The movie was, Ili Fika Mali, I just found myself teary. And my daughter asking me, hey, daddy, hey, Paul. Said, no, don't tell me, Paul. I just felt that there was a, a girl who had asthma. And she was asthmatic and she was trying to run in this competition and she was the only one representing her school. And she believed that she could do it. And the coach kept on encouraging her. And I imagine myself with the days when I used to have, a, have asthmatic attacks. And it was a tough season of my life, but God healed me of asthma. So I saw myself in that movie. Friends, the intentionality of doing activities together as a family, eating together, having those conversations, the good one, even the hard conversations together, really for me was a blessing. So are we being intentional? This N in the intimate is the needs. And I think Pastor Ford already mentioned something that you did this week. The needs is explore each other's love language. And I'm sure you know about the five love languages, the acts of service, the gifts, the touch, the quality time, and the words of affirmation. This is a time for us to do what Proverbs 27, 17 says. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, that just as iron sharpens iron, so will a man sharpen the countenance of his fellow. And friends, in exploring the needs of one another, you need to be keen, a keen listener of what your wife is going through, of what your children are going through. A keen listener of what God is saying. Remember, it's intimate 
my intimacy towards my spouse, my children, my God. And so there is a level of sharpening that will happen. You are able to minister in the real and felt need of the other party. Because sometimes uh, we are in this place where this brother who came home with a Mercedes Benz for his wife, the wife was cele celebrating her, her birthday, and the guy came home. He had been away for almost seven weeks on assignment of work. And the wife had reached a point, was so mad, wondered whether she got married to herself. And she, he comes home very excited with a lovely gift, a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. And he unveils for the wife. And the wife says, well, you're away. I had a diagnosis. I was diagnosed with cancer. I couldn't tell you on phone. I was waiting for you to come. And when he unveiled the S-class, the wife told her, it is useless for me because according to me, I won't be living for long. She had lost hope for life. He was meeting a need that he did, was not necessary at that point. What if our brother had just engaged first, come home first, known where the wife was? I'm sure they, they would have left the house and gone to get a gift that would have been useful for the monument. Friends, sometimes we are busy meeting needs that the person we are trying to reach out does not need because we are not keen to listen to the, what is the felt need, what is the real need of the person you are trying to help. Can we explore is each other's love language? I will never forget how I got so disappointed. I was about three weeks in marriage and I went to town, a street called Standard, Standard Street. There's a place called Card Center. I really wanted to buy a nice card for my wife there. New pride. I didn't have money. So I saved some money. I went to that card shop. And I bought a card worth 450 Now, in the year 2003, to buy a card, that amount, rent was, oh, rent was 2500 Hallelujah. <laughs> so you can see the damage. I come home and I bring my, to my bride a gift and I put there for her. Two days later, I found my card just walking around in the sitting room, being stepped on. I said, do you know the value of this card? But I did not realize her love language is, is not gifts. My wife's love language, as I've come to discover after 18 years of marriage, her love language is quality time. Just sit down and listen. Utakuwa memjenga sana. Don't even bring a gift, just sit and listen. I would never have known that some people just want to be listened to. Me, if you want to love me well, bring me gifts. I was meeting my own need, not her need. How well do you know that family, that spouse? How well do you know your child? My three children, there's one of my children, our middle child, he's like the mom. He will sit in the house and on the laptop, he'd work his games and do his own stuff a whole day, not moved. My daughter and my firstborn on the other side, were people who are outdoors. You want to make them happy, Twende Karura. Let's go ride bikes. They'll be so happy. But there's one who, when you say, let's go out, he just feels energy low. He'd rather be in the house. So uh, please under explore and understand the need of that person, that spouse, that child, that friend, that mom, that dad, in this family setup that God has given us so that you meet a need that, has, that will meet, touch the person you are trying to minister to. The T in the intimate is trust. Trust. I said earlier that the, the, the currency of intimacy is actually trust. Genesis 2.25 talks about the man and his woman were both naked and they felt no shame. What is trust? The level of trust that is being called for, especially in a significant other relationship where there are spouses involved, even with your own children and with our God. God is calling us to a place whereby there is a full naked trust, where I don't fear to be vulnerable for him to see me as I am. It is the place where you deactivate the passwords on your phone. Some of us, we love our spouses so much, but when it reaches our phone, the password blocks everything and even though you love so much, no one knows your password except yours. If you knew someone touched that phone, you will be dead. Someone said, how can you accept someone to see your nakedness the way you are born? But you have, 
you cannot imagine them touching your data. Seeing your files, what you have here, there is a problem. There's, you are malnutritioned in the area of trust. Friends, God is challenging us to rebuild, to reclaim our trust for each other. That bare naked situation that I see in Genesis 2.25, where Adam and Eve are both naked and they felt no shame. It was not just physical shame. It was emotional. It was spiritual. In all ways. Can I see you? When I look at you, do I see what you really are? Or is there more under the table? I'll never forget a lady who told me, Pastor, my husband has been arrested many years ago. We need to go to the cell. We go to the cell at the, at, at the police station. And she got there. Is this your husband? The police start telling her what the husband has been arrested for. The, the lady told me, Pastor, no, that's not my husband. I know. That's a man I've lived with for X number of years. That's not my husband. Until the best friend of the guy was brought out. They were being arrested together and said, allow me to tell you, this is my best friend. <laughs> and the guy began giving her a little history of their friendship of the man she thought she knew and the man, the real guy, and she could not believe it because there was no trust. He never allowed even the spouse who shares the bedroom with him to know who he was, he really was. And that can really break somebody. To know that I am doing life with you and you can't trust me with who you really are. Are, you, are we authentic? Are we authentic in our relationships of who we really are? When we come before God, do we lift up our hands and worship God? But Dani Uko, skeletons. When God looks at you, he sees, no, this is a washed tombstone. Is that we, as Jesus rebuked the Pharisees? I hope that is not you and me. May the Lord help us to be naked before him and allow him to cleanse us with his hope that we may be whiter than snow. As David said in Psalm 51, trust. The eye is interest. Interest. Focus on what the other person enjoys. Friendship building. I think one of my greatest adventures of marriage has been building a friendship with my wife for 18 years, friends. There are things I never thought I could do as a single young man. I never thought I could do. But today, I find myself in the house doing some stuff that makes my wife very happy. And when, she's, when mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Amen? <laughs> Friends, are there some things that you do be simply because you know it will make the other party happy? I remember just going into that kitchen many times and washing plates. I am not a good person. I don't like cooking. But one thing, at least, if I don't cook, I can wash plates. The thing I like doing is just cleaning up. Cleaning up the house, the compound, watering the flowers. I got into a chicken business with Corona. I began a poultry business in our compound. And cuckoo, my eyes are nice. But when you have to clean them up in the morning, <laughs> not very good. But the, I discovered there are things when we do together, it gives us a chance to connect and engage and have conversation. So maybe as a family, you're wondering, how can I engage with my children? It gave us this, uh, this poultry project has given us, well, now we have duties for everyone. You know, you wake up, me, I'll remove the poop. You, you are going to ensure that you put the mats, whatever you're going to, everyone has a role. And in between, we are talking and there's also complaining and some grumbling. But when my, my eye comes, you forget our problems. When we do the sales, hallelujah. <laughs> But as I look at the interest of my party, one of the things that I remember was so hard to start exercising together with, uh, with my family. There's a part of my family that did not believe that you need to exercise. Where are we going? What weight are we cutting? We don't need to cut nothing. We're okay. And I remember after about three weeks when we began measuring our weights and, and we're like, wow, something good is happening. For me, that is my forte. But I had to be joined by this team for us to do it together. And that also made, made me start sitting down. My wife likes reading books. She can do three books comfortably in a month or four. So if you want to be a blessing to her, just sit down. Remember quality time? Read the book together. And as we read, we exchange. She is so happy. So I've become a reader. And that's how I became an author. Because someone was putting me down to read. Because I'm always on the go. You're saying, slow down, let's read a book. 
Hallelujah. I'm acquiring something because it's an interest that I'm developing because it makes my partner happy. Are there some things that you struggle to do? Please do it because you know that we're in this thing together. I like how young people say, let's do life together. Amen. Psalm 51 verse 16 to 17 blessed my heart. You do not despise a sacrifice or a, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. God is interested in a broken and a repentant heart. That he will not reject. Friends, sometimes we need to be broken. I grew up in the Anglican church. I grew up in the Anglican church. Meaning, I would love something, but come down and do this. You'll be surprised what lies on there. As you do it because you are doing it, to just be able to share this moment, you'll be surprised how much gain comes from being able to be a blessing to someone who means something to you. So develop interest and share interests. Build friendship. Friendship building is not an event. It's a journey. And the M in the, relation, in the intimate is managing your emotions. Managing your emotions. Managing your emotions. We need to master the art of being in control of our emotions. Master the art of being in control of our emotion. I like what Song of Songs chapter 2 verse 7 and Song of Songs chapter 3 verse 5. They speak about the same thing and they say, oh daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles, do not arouse or awaken love before it desires. That's something for my young friends. And even some of us who are old. Sometimes you just want to do the wrong thing. You want to come home, but you're thinking it's too early to come home as a man. Watch an EPT somewhere and cool, a coolant. There's a, 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 a base near where I live called coolant. For those who know a coolant in a car, <laughs> this is a, a physical coolant. You just go to cool it. You begin with one bottle, and before long, it is midnight and you're still cooling. And people are waiting. I know a lady who told me, Pastor, I've reached a point where I'm a fika I cannot pick, cook ugali by 7.30. I wait for someone until 1 a.m. I can't sleep when he's out because I worry if something happens, what will happen to me? So you are punishing someone until 1 a.m. Anangoja. Because you, you, are, you must enjoy what you want and you don't care. Please, friends, let us not get too excited of pleasing our feelings and be careless or not take into account what the other party will feel. So ma let's manage our emotion. I like a story that uh, Pastor Kingsley shared about, he was coming from the airport with a cab driver at 1 a.m. Go to the airport at 1 a.m. And there was this cab driver, uh, Uber guy, who was chewing gum. And he was chewing loudly, he left, mm, slapping. And he says he hated that, that chewing sound. And he almost, he told the driver, I, I tried to kujishikilia kidogo, and the guy kept on chewing loudly and say, you know what? Can't you behave? I am your client and you are chewing. Stop. The, the, then the cab driver called him and told him, sorry, sir, allow me to share something. I did not sleep for the last two days I've been working. If I stop chewing, I will sleep. The reason why I'm chewing is to stay awake. The guy told him, please go ahead, chew. <laughs> His perspective changed. Now he didn't hear the noise of the chewing. He remembered it is his life at stake here. That if I stop chewing, we are dead. Perspective. Friends, in managing our emotions, it depends on where, what, what perspective are you at, 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 at looking at the problem from. You could discover that the thing that irritates you about that person is something that if you understood where they are coming from, you would manage the situation better. Praise the Lord. A which is the second last, is advancement. Advancement. Ecclesiastes 4.9. Ecclesiastes 4.9, the Bible says, two are better than one because they can help each other succeed. Two are better than one because they can help each other to succeed. Help each other to advance. Help each other as a family to grow. Purpose to leave your partner Better, and allow me to speak for those guys who are fiancés and boyfriends and girlfriends because I'm a youth pastor. 
There are many young people I meet who tell me, Pasi had an ex. Hey, that's a Nikokwa ex number seven. And if I count through the trail of your exes, it's all damage, damage, damage. I'll never forget one time, I, my first time in the US, I was in Dallas, Texas. And the lady I used to go out with drove from Houston to Dallas to come and appreciate me. And she came along with her fiancé who they were planning to get married. And she told the guy, this was my first boyfriend before I left Kenya. And there's something about this, young, this guy. He really respected me and honored me. He never touched me in a way. Why do you see me so hard with you in that area of physical engagement? I credit him for teaching me that kind of restraint and self-control. When you hear your ex praising you to the guy who is marrying her, no, that is not you, it is God. I can tell it was not a walk in the park for me. It was a struggle. But I could hear someone else saying, this person made me, help me to be a better person than I was. Please purpose to leave people better than you found them. It could be even in your working environment as a leader, as an employer. Are you the kind of boss who, when you arrive, the workers scamper for safety? You'd have, you don't have kind words for people. Do you help other people advance the house help in the house. Ukifika, anahepa. Or do they feel like someone who values my input? Do we purpose to help that spouse? Mine has only been with me for 18 years. Yesterday, it was her birthday yesterday, and I was celebrating her. And my wife told me, I think you over-celebrate me. And I told her, I wish I could do more. Because you have no idea, Mali I was 500 MB. Now I'm 1.5 GB. Hallelujah. Can you imagine me 19 years ago? She's been at work, that lady. We got married when I was a Form 4 certificate holder. I only had my Form 4 certificate when I was getting married. Today, as you've had my credentials, Reverend Furi can read. You can read something. Someone has been helping in my court. She has been helping me to advance career-wise. Loving on me. Praying with me. Me and my wife wake up at 4 a.m. to pray. We have a 4 a.m. practice of prayer. And when our children are at home, even the teenagers join in. Advancing each other spiritually. Physically, as we exercise, we also eat together. We have a duty and our, our tradition in our house. When food has been put on the table, it does not matter what you are doing. We must eat together. That's a family tradition. It has helped us to bond. I borrowed, I borrowed that from my parents. Amen. And finally, T. On in, it's actually, no, the second is T. It's a time. Time. After advancement is time. Intimacy is not built overnight. It is built over time. Intimacy is not built overnight. It is built over time. Friends, I don't know how many couples are watching online and you can't remember the last time you had a date with your spouse. The last time you had a date with your children. Just a date night that you dressed for. Just go and have some time. Make time. Be, inten be intentional and deliberate about spending time together as a family. Be intentional and deliberate about securing that family time together. I like Mark Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark 1, 35, the gospel of Mark, he says, early in the morning, Jesus went up to pray, and he, with loud voices, he called out to his father. It was his tradition to go up early in the morning to speak with his father. Psalm 42, verse 1, talks about, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after thee. Do we have that sense of time that when we sit together, we enjoy, we look forward as that dear who panting for what, we long for that time together so that we, we, may, we may advance and reach each other in our growth holistically. And E in the intimate is exclusivity. 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 Focus on each other. Jealously guard your intimate space. Jealously guard your intimate space. Some of us have allowed so many parasites to enter the intimate space of our relationship, namely our marriage. And I speak, allow me to speak now as a marriage therapist. This is some, a problem I see a lot today. People, a lot of us have brought work into the bedroom. 
You enter that room that is supposed to be a place where you guard and you have your phone and you're chatting away and you're chatting with someone thousands of miles away and this person who is near you is lonely and you can chat on that phone for two hours. I have some extra work to do and I carry my laptop. This laptop does not enter the bedroom. This enters there when it is not on data. I go off on data when I enter that bedroom. Exclusivity. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15. Solomon writes and says, Catch for us the little foxes. Do you know what the little foxes can do? They ruin whole vineyards. Song of Songs 215. Catch for us the little foxes. Friends, exclusivity demands that you look out for the little foxes and catch them before they ruin whole vineyards. You cannot go in honeying everyone. Your wife is your honey and your neighbor is your honey, sweetheart. Kipiga simu, secretary, hi honey. Kunamalia exclusivity. Save some vocabulary for those who matter. Save, tell someone, save, your, save some vocabulary for the exclusive space. It can't be everybody. That is what exclusivity looks like. It can't be everyone. There must be a specialness that you reserve for that significant other spouse, that you reserve for your children. Friends, this one, a friend of mine asked me today, isn't it funny that some of us moms, this is for moms, if your child cries, there's a child here uh, below the age of five, um, below the age of two, amelia, utatoka mbio mtoto amelia, lakini ukisikia mzee, amepatikana kwa shida, town, alikuwa kwa accident, unasema atajipanga. Amen. Before there was that family, that home, kulikuwa na mtu. Let us re not, not reach a place where there is familiarity. Familiarity breeds contempt. There must be that sense of loyalty and respect and honor and value for each other. For us to reclaim this intimacy. I like how Revelation puts it. Remember how far you have fallen. Today I was talking with my brother-in-law and friend, Barnabas Achoki. He sent his love to you, Reverend Furi says, you know, he told me this, they said, Pastor, isn't it funny that God is actually asking us, do you know how far you have fallen? Some, sometimes we have so fallen so far in our duties as a husband, as a wife, as a father, as a mother. We have fallen so far, but we don't have an idea we fell because there's no one in that inner circle to call us out. Intimacy demands that you allow someone in this space to call you out. Say, you know what, when I, you see me sliding off, Please slide into my DM. I give you permission. Call me out. Intimacy will, can never be forced. You must open the door and welcome someone. It is, it is work that you do for yourself. You, you must be generous with both the good the bad and the ugly, so that if there's something wrong, you have given someone permission to be able to be on the front row to help and to correct. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27 verse 5 that I finish with, Proverbs 27 verse 5, that better is, a, is an open rebuke than hidden love. Better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Friends, could it be that God is rebuking us tonight or encouraging us or cheering us? Or we feel this is it. I've been able to walk right. We can always get better. And the space of intimate place where God is inviting us to be in that place. If we get intimate with our Father, with God, you'll find it, it will easily translate into our significant other relationship. Because he has modeled for us Intimacy by bearing it all on the cross. All. And so we can sing all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love 
and trust him. We are being called to model to each other what Jesus already has molded for us on the cross. He gave his all. Is it so hard for him to ask us to do that to one another? Let us pray. Maybe you are watching online. Maybe you are here this evening and you're saying, Pastor Ken, as you pray, I know that I have not been very faithful in modeling intimacy for my spouse, for my children. I need, I need God's help. I need divine in intervention. I need God's speed to be able to do it right because my way has failed. There's a level of selfishness. I think of myself first before extending grace to my spouse, to my children. Tonight, may I invite you to just pray with me as you put your right hand close to your heart at the heart of the matters where matters hurt most. As we pray, dear Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight that you have loved us with an everlasting love. And you have called us, O oh God, to be Christ-like, to be, to live, to love like you love, to walk like you walk. And Father Lord, we are so grateful that even in those moments, O oh God, when we go off like the prodigal son, your arms are wide open. Your arms are wide open, inviting us in, inviting us back to the space of security in the loving arms of our Father. And that does not stop you from slaughtering the fattened calf because you want us back. You'd never allow one sheep to get lost. You'd rather leave the 99 in the pen and go out for that one. So my brother and my sister who is in a need of prayer tonight in reclaiming their intimacy with you first, coming back, maybe they have fallen off from their walk with God and they are no longer born again. They, don't, they can't even account for their walk with you. And no wonder they are struggling in their relationship. Tonight they say, I just want to reclaim my walk, my salvation, my confession, my faith in God. I pray that God would you grant them a visitation. As your word says in Revelation 3.20, you say, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if someone hears my voice and opens, I will come in. We open for you tonight. We invite you, Lord, to come in and dine with us, Lord, for your glory. Bring us back to the fold. Thank you for this moment, oh God. We celebrate your love and goodness. And now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or think or even imagine according to your power that is at work within us. Lord, be glory unto you and to the church in Christ Jesus. Not just now, but throughout all generations. And the church said, Amen.